Hey guys, Mike Hatch here uh, with Empowered Manhood where we're helping men rediscover courageous masculinity in the light of the gospel. I just got done running three miles, probably the slowest three mile run I've ever done in my life. I think it ended up about 10 minutes, no, sorry, about a 10 minute mile for three miles. <laughs> uh, I remember when I was in like high school and college just running sub seven or something like that. I could run probably two or three miles at that speed. But man, this was the slowest I've ever run. And guess what? I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. And, uh, and here's why. So I ran track in high school and college and uh, ran the 400 meter hurdles in college. Um, and, you know, probably about 58 seconds. I wasn't super fast, but that's probably faster than most. And then a 10.8 ish 100 meter dash and uh you know and, and that's that's decent i know but it's not you know it's not 9.8 <laughs> like it or lower the guys are running today anyway i was fast but i had a big problem um my arches were fallen and i had a serious knee and lower back problems when i would run in fact it got so bad my college trainer would actually tape my heel and the ball of my foot and pull them together to create an arch which completely defeated the purpose because there's no spring in my step. And so it just made things worse. And so I, you know, uh, what would you call it? Um, shin splints and, uh, and um, stress fractures were always a, uh, a danger for me with my shins because I had such bad feet, ankles, and knees. That is until I met my chiropractor, Dr. Dan Turak, shout out to Dan. Um, and he taught me, well, first of all, he helped with my back problem because that was what I came in for was my lower back problem, which, been, which has been a problem for me since middle school. I would literally miss school because of my back or I would miss football practice or games sometimes because my back was thrown out. And he helped me to, uh, to fix that um, in, in different ways than I would have th thought. He didn't, just, um, he didn't just adjust me or soothe the pain in different ways. Instead, he actually taught me how to strengthen different muscles uh, that were out of whack and that were at the root of causing my back problems. And then enabled me, uh, taught me how to do these exercises and stretches, especially through his training facility, Beat Fitness, which is part of his chiropractic facility, and trained me to, to strengthen the muscles to eliminate my back problems. And then I also now am empowered <laughs> That's one of his uh, key terms too, is, is to live empowered. Uh, because he doesn't want you coming in constantly for adjustments, he wants you to be able to take care of yourself, strengthen yourself, stretch, it, stretch yourself, so that you can take care of your own back problems. Well, a couple, two or three years ago, uh, Dr. Dan got into GOTA, and GOTA is a new way, uh, or based on research, of, uh, of looking at uh, movement the athletes have naturally, especially those athletes who've been the healthiest and those athletes who've been, who've had the longest uh, careers and maybe have excelled the most. They looked at these athletes and, uh, and they found out the way they moved um, was different from other athletes who, uh, who were less successful or didn't have as much longevity. And GOTA stands, it's G-O-T-A, it stands for greatest of all time athletes. And so Dr. Dan, a couple years ago, started teaching me the go to movement. And I started that and uh, because I already trusted him with what he'd done to me uh, for my back problems. And I started working on that. And man, it's been a process. So here's the deal. I used to not be able to run more than two miles max without my shins absolutely being destroyed because my arches were falling and so I had flat feet. It was really bad. Through learning how to do the go to movement, I've had to unlearn everything I knew about running, running technique, running form, and, and I, I even, even ran in college for two years. Um, I had to relearn it all, and it took several years. Um, and so shout out to Dr. Dan, but also shout out to Vivo Barefoot. So I've been wearing your shoes, which have been great. However, my last two pair, my first two pair, have all... Uh, falling apart within three to five months. So you're on probation for me. I'm on my third pair, if you can see here. I'm on my third third pair here. Um, I, th I hope I got that. 
I'm on my third pair of Vivos now. Um, and that's what I've been running now recently. That's what I ran the three miles today in. And that's the huge accomplishment because I would never be able to run three miles barefoot like this. I would need my bubble shoes and I call them bubble shoes now. They are, they're running shoes. They're the classic running shoes that are, I, I, <laughs> I had big thick pads, arch support. Um, I had uh, motion control built into the shoe everything to help try to to maintain an arch of some sort and support for for my shins and my knees um but eventually i had to buy new ones because those would wear down over and over and over again well now because of goda i've actually rebuilt my arch my arches I've, i have arches now i didn't know i could actually get my arches back but i did and it's a miracle and so i'm excited about that so now not only can i run without bubble shoes I can run three miles barefoot in Vivo Barefoots. I'm so pumped about that. This is, this is life changing for, for me because I've always been an athlete. I've always loved physical uh, stress and, and, and competition and things like that. And so this has given me a whole new lease on life. So three miles today in my Vivo Barefoots, <laughs> 10 minutes a mile. Woo! -hoo! It's been amazing. So, um, but here's the other thought I wanted to leave with you guys. Not just that. Um, I think this applies to all sorts of areas in life. Where are the areas in life that we are tolerating um, bubble shoes? <laughs> or maybe they're bubble shoes for our worldviews. Maybe they're bubble shoes for our paradigm that keep us comfortable, but yet keep us enslaved in ways and dealing with chronic issues emotionally, spiritually, or physically that won't go away because we're not dealing with the root issue. And guys, this is one of the reasons I believe that a lot of us as men are disempowered because we are too caught up in the things that, um, in comfort, in comfort and, and isolation. We, we don't want the stress of conflict in our lives. And so we often will, will isolate and disconnect from relationships um, we struggle with insecurity in our marriages, um, in leading our families, uh, parenting, all these different things. And, and here, here's my point is, are you willing to deconstruct in a sense? And I mean that not in, not in a progressive Christianity sense, by the way. I mean that in the sense, are you willing to question convention in order to uh, maybe rethink what the root issue might be for you? Okay, for me, I had to deconstruct what I knew, unlearn what I knew about running in order to get to this point several years later where now I can run three miles in bare feet, pain free, no shin splints, no knee problems, back problems gone. But it's taken a lot of time. It's taken a lot of time to deconstruct and unlearn the unhealthy patterns and then build from a new base, a new base layer that. Uh, is more healthy and sustainable uh, long term. And so, yeah, so the question is, guys, you know, where do you need to um, maybe break things down to your base layer? And I believe that's the root of most men's issues in terms of their confidence, in terms of uh, our willingness to endure conflict or stress or discomfort. Um, and these are the things that actually build character. So relational connection is I believe, and I'll talk about this later in another video in more detail, but I believe it's the crucible for sanctification. I believe that relationships are where God forms us in the forge and, uh, and, and, and makes us who he wants us eventually to be for his kingdom purposes. But we isolate from relationships, okay? Preferring comfort and, and in our own paradigm um, because that way we're not gonna be challenged. That way no one's gonna uh, tell us we're wrong. <laughs> we are so ego driven. We are so ego driven. And so we don't want to think that, that where we are might not be the right place or, or, or the way we're thinking might be, might be wrong. And so we continue in these destructive patterns till we literally destroy ourselves. <laughs> I believe that empow the empowered man is humble enough to question his own paradigm 
is humble enough to uh, not be offended when someone else questions his paradigm or, or, uh, or someone else different from you comes and you have a dialogue together that you can humbly have a discussion without dismissing the other person, without um, uh, vilifying the other person because they're on the other side. Um, yeah, I'm getting into politics here a little bit. But are we willing as men empowered by the light of the gospel, which should give us confidence, not in ourselves, it gives us confidence in Christ who provided for us. So we don't have to worry about, um, we don't have to worry about other people's opinions because the opinion that God has of us through Christ is the only one that matters and it's eternal and secure. All right, that's it for now. I've got a lawnmower coming here. <laughs> Hopefully this is beneficial, you guys. Um, have a great day.